So the other day I was watching a show on Netflix called Breakpoint and it's a show that tracks the world's greatest tennis players and their journey to winning the four major Grand Slams. And tennis is a very interesting sport. I used to play competitively myself and I remember going into each and every match and almost being unhinged at the amount of emotions I was feeling while I was facing someone one-to-one. -one. See the thing about tennis is it's very solitary. You don't necessarily have teammates to bounce emotions off of or to run ideas from or to even collaborate with. It is literally you, a ball, your racket, and the person that is across from you. So in this show, there's this person called Nick Kyrgios, and he is the world's 20th ranked player. Now the funny thing is, is that Nick is one of the most talented players on the circuit. And when his peers talk about him, when coaches talk about him, when experts talk about him, they say that he could be one of the best players in the world. But one of the reasons that he's not is because he has an inability to control his emotions. So when he's playing a game and he lets his emotions get out of hand, it causes him to complain, it throws him off his game, he starts to make mistakes, and then that's what causes him to lose games. And it's his inability to control his emotions that is his biggest downfall. And I'm going to say, even though you're watching this and you're not a tennis player, I'm gonna say that we are largely held back, not because of our emotions, but because of our inability to manage our emotions. And if we actually learn how to manage our emotions, not necessarily control them, but to manage them, we will be opening up a huge reservoir of potential in front of us. Now, managing your emotions is probably one of the hardest things to do. So in this video, I am going to show you my process that I use to help manage my emotions so I'm not reacting to them in negative ways, especially when it comes to diet, exercise, or even to other people. So that is what this video is about, and let's get to it. So there's a few ways in which people react to emotions, especially in the 21st century. Number one is they react to it when the emotion is felt. So someone makes you angry, you react to it by fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. Or what a lot of people do is you get angry and then you tend to try to numb it out with food or in some cases, drugs or alcohol. And then there's another way in which people try to manage their emotions. They feel an emotion, and because they're in a situation where they have to perform, they push the emotion down until they get to the end of the day and the end of whatever they were doing, and then the emotion actually comes back. It has this ripple effect and it reverberates. And how do I know this? I'm probably speaking from my own personal experience and also through talking with the clients that we work with inside of our practice as well. Now you see, for me, the way in which I dealt with my emotions was pretty easy. I would either just completely avoid them and just go play video games, do something to distract me, go eat some food or go out with my friends and party. Or if it was really strong and I couldn't necessarily control it, I would react to it in many ways. I Either by reacting to it in terms of fighting the person who caused me to feel this emotion, which was really myself, I caused myself to feel the emotion, but whoever was in the vicinity of that, or I would react in ways that would cause me to regret my actions later on. And this is a little hard for me because, you know, when it comes to me becoming the man that I am, it really is a factor of me coming in touch with my emotions. And a lot of people would actually tell you, like, you know, especially for men, it's like, you know, you shouldn't show your emotions on the outside and you shouldn't uh, show other people like how you're feeling and all this kind of stuff you should be stoic and I think that is great to a degree I think it does work to a degree but it doesn't mean those emotions go away. So one of the things that I had to learn in my own journey is to deal with my emotions when they come up and to allow myself to actually feel them fully instead of trying to push them down. Now that doesn't mean to react to other people in uh, various forms or fashions. It means to be introspective into myself and finding out what is the signal and what is the communication this emotion is trying to tell me. And I'm not gonna say that I came across this by just 
stumbling upon it. I mean, I've been working on myself for the past decade. I've been through therapy sessions. I've uh, done many forms of uh, personal coaching. I've actually been introspective. I've been journaling every single day just to get to know myself better. I mean, I forgot who the quote was from. Probably uh, people will correct me in the comments, but, uh, but pretty much like I, I do feel that the unlived life is one that is not having any type of introspection to find out who we really are as people. And if we really want to know ourselves, the nature of humans is emotional. So what I'm about to show you in this video is based on my own journey, based on things that I've seen and things that I've used to help me manage my emotions, and also things that we have used with other clients to help them manage their emotions. And when I say clients, like we are working with some of the highest performing achievers on the planet and helping them get in shape. What happens as a result is, is that they actually use a lot of their emotions and try to numb them in ways. And instead of using tactics and tools, we actually kind of see ourselves as a little bit of a psychological and also a physiological transformation process where we help them work through these emotions. So. While you may not be a highly ranked tennis player, you are a human and you do feel emotions. So one of the hidden mental secrets of high performance and reaching your full potential is learning how to manage your emotions. So in this case, there are about three steps that I'm gonna take you through that are gonna hopefully help you manage your emotions, get to know them a little bit better and not be so triggered every single time that they come up. And the three steps are awareness, logging triggers, and then what we call emotional mastery. So the very first step is literal awareness. It is seeing yourself, feeling the emotion, and then allowing yourself to feel it, being aware that it's happening. Now, you can mitigate this and actually slow down this response between stimulus and response by doing things like eating really good food, getting enough sleep, exercising and exhausting your body. This slows you down enough so you can actually see what is happening inside of your mind. There are other ways that you can do this as well, which is breathing exercises. Anytime that you feel a strong emotion, anytime you feel stress or anxiety, you usually have shallow breath so one of the things to do is just to be aware of your breath and to allow yourself to breathe deeply to give yourself that time so you can actually be aware of what is happening and awareness is the first step not a lot of people give themselves this step in the first place they kind of just see the ways that they're acting they don't really relate it back to the emotions that they're feeling so we have to slow down and allow ourselves to be aware that's the first step now the second step is what is called logging triggers. So when an emotion happens and it makes you feel a certain way, this is what we can call a trigger. And a lot of times these triggers, they come up in the present moment, but they also are reverberations from what we have experienced in the past. And like I said before, emotions have the, the short-term effect and also a long-term effect. The short-term effect that people use it for is either reacting to the emotion when it comes or using food, drugs, or alcohol to actually numb it from actually feeling in the first place and just forgetting about it. And then there's a long-term effect where they just push it down until they get to the end of the day and then they end up eating their emotions or drinking their emotions or just reacting in ways that wouldn't be in line with the person that they want to be. So what we want to do is we want to log the emotions as they're happening and there's a very specific process that I have found to be very useful for myself and also our clients and I want to share this with you right now. I got this process from a mental health startup it's called Liberate that's Liberate and instead of the ATE there's an eight and uh, in this video I'm gonna link in the description of the founder actually talking about this process and what this process does but essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna ask yourself a series of 14 questions inside of a journal and you can put this on a template you can put this on an excel template so you don't have to like write out these questions again i'll actually put these questions in the description below and then every single time that you feel an emotion you are going to ask yourself these questions in sequence so you can allow yourself to give a little bit of pause between that stimulus and response so step two the next time that you feel an emotion here's what you're going to do you're going to ask yourself these questions 
Number one, what's the title of what is happening right now? So let's just say like the boss or your boss like told you that uh, you have to stay late and you felt a certain way or your partner actually said something to you and that made you feel a certain way. Log whatever the title of that situation is. That's the first question. The second question on a scale of one to 10, how intense was this emotion? And I like to say that you can't use seven. So you have the scale of one to 10, you can't use seven because a lot of times seven is a cop out and we wanna know on a scale of one to 10, not using seven, how intense were these emotions that you felt? The third question is, is what actually happened to cause the trigger? What was the situation that happened? Do a little bit of a, like a one or two sentence journal as to say like what that situation was. Question number four is what occurred in your body when you were feeling this emotion? So a lot of times we feel like emotions are all up here, but the reality is, is that we feel them inside of our body. So where did you actually feel it? What occurred in your body when this happened? And number five is to note down the emotions that came up in the first place. What were you feeling? What was the core emotions that you were feeling that happened within that situation? And number six is asking yourself, which one of these categories did you feel during that situation? Number one is going to be rejection, two is abandonment, humiliation, betrayal, or injustice. It could be a combination, it could be one or the other, but which one of these did you feel? Number seven is gonna be what do these feelings manifest into? And there are again, categories. So number one is depression. Number two is anxiety. Number three is lack of control. Number four is conflict. And number five is chronic pain. It could be a combination again, or it could be one or the other. Which one of these were you actually manifesting into? And number eight, were you feeling pushed into this emotion or were you being pulled into it? And I like to liken this to being pushed into a situation, or if you feel like you are emotionally and mentally pulled into doing something about it or into reacting in a certain way. Number nine is going to be what response did you have? And we talked about this in the beginning. We have fight, which means you actually want to create conflict. You want to fight the person or fight what is happening. You have flight, which means you want to flee. You have freeze, which means indecision. You did not know exactly what to do. And then you have fawn, which is trying to make other people happy, trying to create peace in the situation. Number 10 is going to be listing out the actions that you took or did not take to react to the emotion or the responses that you experienced. Number 11, when you sit down with this feeling, can you think of other times in your life where you experienced the same feelings and emotions? There possibly are a couple of past events that have happened that have caused you to feel the same way. So what we wanna do is we wanna find out, okay, so is this coming from somewhere that's inside of my past? Note those things down. Number 12, why did this happen for you? Every single good situation comes with a bad situation. Every single bad situation comes with a good and there is always opportunities. So how exactly did this opportunity or this particular situation happen for you? Write that down. And the second last one is going to be just free writing, anything else that you want to note down about this experience. And the last question is going to be going back to the beginning. What is the intensity of this trigger that you felt? Sometimes or a lot of times when you say it's like an eight or nine in terms of this emotion, doing this process can give you enough pause between stimulus and response to bring it down to about a six or a five. And that's what we want to do. We want to create this space between the event and our actual reaction. This allows us to choose how we respond to it. And doing step two is critical because it leads us to the next step, which is called emotional mastery. And the final step would be the practice. It would be doing this enough times so it becomes automatic, sort of like brushing your teeth. And the only way that we can get there is by practice, practice, practice. So think of emotional mastery in four stages. So number one is unconscious incompetence, which means that you really don't know that you don't have a problem, so you're not really gonna do anything about it. The next one is going to be conscious incompetence, which means that you know you have a problem, you just don't know exactly what to do in order to solve it. The third level is going to be conscious competence, which means that you know exactly what you have to do to solve this problem and you're in the position and you're actually taking the actions to solve it. And this is where a lot of people who might be watching this video are at this point. 
And then the last step is going to be unconscious competence, which means that the process is automatic. You have done the work so much that it becomes like autopilot. You go through this process, you allow yourself to do it, and then this helps you deal with your emotions and manage them in ways that are much healthier. And the very cool thing about this whole process is that it actually helps you downgrade the emotional impacts over time. The same situations that triggered you to do certain things, they don't have the same power over you. And this is the work that needs to be done in order to gain control over this part of your life once and for all. So now it's time to put this into practice. If you've been watching this video, if you've gone this far and you've been watching this, I really do feel that managing your emotions is the gateway to fulfilling your full potential as a human being. So what are you going to do right now? Next time that you feel an emotion, take yourself through this process. I'm going to have the questions inside of the description. And if you did make it this far, then I just want to say thank you. I appreciate your attention and also subscribe to the video. I'm doing more of these videos because I want us to reach our fullest potential as human beings. And I want to make sure that you and I are living out our best lives. So if that's cool with you, then subscribe. If you have some questions or you have some comments or feedback, I'd love to hear them. Leave a comment down below and I'd love to hear from you. And that's it. One of the greatest joys of life is doing certain types of work that can actually make you better. And I do believe that being able to manage your emotions and doing them in healthy ways, not doing them in ways where you're trying to push them away or show people that you're not feeling emotions, I actually do feel that this is the gateway to becoming a better version of yourself. So thanks for watching the video and I'll see you on the next one.